Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to start a very important discussion on the anatomy of pancreas. So in this series on pancreatic anatomy, we are going to go back to basics, look at the parts of the pancreas and how they are divided, what are the anatomical landmarks which help in division or parts of the pancreas. We will look at the embryology of the pancreas. It's a very commonly asked topic, often confusing. We will also look at the entities of annular pancreas, pancreas divisum, and some other relevant points which are clinically important as well as routinely asked in exams. We will look at a video on arterial supply as well as venous drainage of the pancreas and then the lymphatics and nerve supply. Throughout the series, it will be more applied, something that is routinely helpful in practice, in surgery, as well as in your exam, and something that will help you in understanding the scans of pancreas. So let us look at the pancreas as we go inside the abdomen. So from anterior to posterior, we know that when we open the abdomen, the pancreas is not visible, right? It is covered by various organs. So you can see the organs that are covering the pancreas, stomach, okay, mesocolon, colon, all of these structures are anterior to the pancreas. So the red dotted line shows the incision that we give in the lesser sect. It is below the gastroepiploic arcade. So once you incise these layers of uh, momentum that is when you will start seeing this kind of structure so this is actually what you will see the pancreas once you have opened the abdomen once you have retracted the organs the stomach the mesocolon has been brought down lesser sac has been opened and that is where you will see the pancreas so that is how you can identify the pancreas a bit of terminology it is a greek term pan means all and creas is Flesh, so all flesh, that is the meaning of the name. It is a J shaped retroperitoneal organ and it slopes upwards. So, from right to left, as you go from the C loop of duodenum to the splenic hilum, it has a trajectory that is sloping upwards. Pancreas rests on the major vessels and the vertebra. So, the vertebral level, the vertebral body where the pancreas is related is. L1 and L2. So, pancreatic neck lies anterior to vertebral body L1 and L2. And between the vertebra and pancreas is only the major vessels, the abdominal aorta, inferior vena cava, portal vein, celiac artery is above the pancreas, superior mesenteric artery is behind the pancreas. So, all the major vessels are related intimately to the pancreas. Now, when we come to part of the pancreas, and this is a very important concept that we are going to discuss, because many times pancreas is arbitrarily divided, but that is not right, because in surgery, you need to understand these landmarks. So, all the part of pancreas that is to the right of the portal vein, okay, or the right of the superior mesenteric vein is basically the head of the pancreas, and posteriorly the uncinate process. So the lateral border of the head of the pancreas is basically the right border of portal vein. Okay. So it has superior border, inferior border, both of which are related to the C loop of duodenum and the right lateral border, okay, which is again related to the C loop of duodenum. So Head of the pancreas nicely embraced by the C loop of duodenum. It has two surfaces, anterior and posterior. And what divides head from neck is the right border of portal vein, right? So when we talk of imaging based classification, and this is important to understand, the neck of the pancreas is the part of pancreas that is anterior to the portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, right? So, the part of pancreas, also known as central pancreas, is the neck of pancreas. Commonly asked questions, don't get confused. Central pancreas is the neck of the pancreas. Its lateral limit or the left limit is the end of the superior mesenteric artery. Okay. So, the left border of superior mesenteric artery 
forms the inferior lateral limit of the neck. So right border of portal vein is where the head ends. Between that and the left border of superior mesenteric vein or superior mesenteric artery is your neck. Beyond this is the left pancreas. So body and tail are basically what comprises the left pancreas. How to separate body and tail? There is a dictum which says they divide it into half. But anatomically, it is the left border of the aorta. Okay, So left border of the aorta separates the body from the tail of the pancreas. Winslow pancreas is basically unseen in process or the hook. Okay, So don't confuse yourself if someone asks you Winslow pancreas, it is unseen in process. Okay. So head and unseen head process form the right pancreas, neck forms the central pancreas and body and tail form the left pancreas. So again, if we want to understand this, D is right pancreas, dextro and levo, right? So D is right pancreas, L is left pancreas, C is central pancreas. The division you can see is two borders of the portal vein, okay? But... What is anterior? Anteriorly from the right line, okay? The right line basically is the right border of the portal vein and the right border of the gastroduodenal artery. So when you want to divide pancreas in imaging, one of the landmarks is that you identify the right border of the portal vein, the right border of the gastroduodenal artery and draw a line. Everything to the right of this is right pancreas, dextro pancreas, central pancreas and levo or the left pancreas. When it comes to left pancreas, this line is just drawn parallel to the previous line but along the left border of the portal wing, right? So that is how this classification based on imaging can be understood. Parts of pancreas is a commonly asked question. So if you remember all these borders, it's easy to understand. Now, if you turn the pancreas or if you look at a person from behind, it is very important to remember this concept because this is where you will understand the concepts of mesopancreas as well as retroportal lamina. So if you are looking at a person from behind and if you remove the vertebra and the major vessels, this is how you will see the structures, okay? So you will see the common bile duct, the portal vein, the splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein, superior mesenteric artery and hepatic artery and the splenic artery and vein, right? So this is how you will see all the structures from behind. Posterior relations of pancreas from right to left, we know related to inferior vena cava and aorta. Then it is related to left kidney, left renal vein and adrenal gland. And the tail part is related to the spleen, right? So these are the posterior relations of the pancreas. What is mesopancreas? It is a structure that comprises mainly the vessels of the pancreas as well as the nerves. It is posterior surface of the head, neck and unseen head process of the pancreas. So this area from here, the structures are covered by fat and some flimsy facial layers. And from there, they will go towards the left side of SMA as well as to the inferior vena cava, aortocaval group and aorta. So this is the mesentery of the pancreas where from head, neck and unseen head process, posterior surface, it goes behind the superior mesenteric vein and then goes to right or left side of superior mesenteric artery as well as to inferior vena cava, aortocaval groove and the aorta. So that is basically the mesopancreas. So if someone asks you mesopancreas, it's basically a retroportal or a retro superior mesenteric vein structure. That is why looking at the pancreas from back, you can see the mesopancreas. Just like when you want to see the pancreas anteriorly, you open the lesser sac. Posteriorly, you open the mesopancreas. So that is how you can remember this area. Now coming to pancreatic duct, we know the duct of Virsang and the duct of Santorini, major papilla and the 
minor papilla. So where the entire duct is draining, this is the major papilla or papilla of waiter. Smaller duct, duct of Santorini, opens through minor sphincter, that is minor papilla. We will look at the pancreatic duct formation in detail when we study the embryology of the pancreas. But in this video, basically, we are trying to explain the various names, the various parts of pancreas and its very intimate relations in the body and surface landmarks, which is L1, L2 vertebra. So, in this video, we are just trying to bring about all the names, all the terms that you need to remember. We know that the duct of Virsang joins with the common bile duct, forms the ampulla, which is the ampulla of waiter, opens in the duodenum through the major papilla or papilla of waiter. So that is how you can remember the pancreatic duct. So in the next part of this video, we will now go into the details of embryology of pancreas and discuss common congenital anomalies and clinical relevance. And then in upcoming parts, we will look at the blood supply as well as the lymphatic drainage, nerve supply and its oncological importance. Thank you.